Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. And today we're going to be doing another top 5 video, except today, instead of top 5 guns, it's top 5 carry rounds. <gasps> yeah, we gave this some thought. Damn. So, we've been lucky enough over the years to test a lot of really, really good carry rounds. And we figure it's summer, there's lots of folks carrying, which people carry all the time anyway. But it just seems like there's been a heck of a lot of interest in carry guns, carry ammunition, personal defense. Um, you know, be it because of the current political stratum or any other random number of reasons, okay, people just seem, seem to really be into carry guns right now. So we're going to talk about carry rounds a little bit. And, you know, top five is almost kind of unfair because there's not that many truly excellent carry rounds out there. I mean, there, there are a lot of different options, and sometimes it can be a bit confusing in terms of what's out there, what they offer, what they do, how good they are. You know, some people look at carry ammo and they go, holy crap, this is a $30 box of ammo. How do I justify this expense? How do I justify the price? So on, so forth. Um, so we'll just go down the line um, in no particular mm -hmm. order. I don't know. I mean, the big thing with carry ammo is that there's kind of like, you know, like Eric said, there's a bunch on the market, and you don't really know what to choose from, but there's a few that are at the top of the hill. Oh, yeah. So, oh, all yeah. right, so no particular order. Start on your end with the uh, Spear Gold Dot. Okay, so Spear Gold Dot, okay, if, if you don't know what a Spear Gold Dot is, you've been living under a rock, as they say. Spear Gold Dot has been probably one of the most popular, like, law enforcement rounds for, God, at least two decades, if not longer than that. It's been a very, very popular round. It's a bonded core projectile, which means basically that the jacket and the core are bonded at a molecular level, so you get superior weight retention. You don't get any jacket and core separation, which is uh, pretty prevalent in like cheaper like hollow points and things like that, and some soft point ammunition where the core is literally just pressed inside and then it's swaged, you know, the jacket swaged around it. The core will just separate off upon impact on gel or you know an animal or whatever the case is, whatever whatever the situation is. But you want that weight retention. That's the big thing with carry ammo. You want the most weight retention on target so you get the most energy delivered. I mean that's the idea. Absolutely. You know? But well, the thing about bonded core, I believe, and, and this isn't necessarily exclusively a spear gold dot type of thing, mm -hmm. but just a bonded core bullet type of thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, the idea behind bonded core bullets comes down to like dangerous game hunting. Mm -hmm. A lot of African uh, game hunters, you know, use bonded core bullets, they use solids, mm -hmm. and a lot of that data can be used to apply to carry ammunition. So what makes modern carry ammunition so much different than some of the stuff in the older days is that it is, it's been sort of a renaissance of quality propellants. Mm -hmm. So the propellants have excellent flash retarding properties in a lot of these carry rounds. Um, also, the bullet designs are very superior as well as the physical characteristics of the powders they use allow higher than normal velocities what, than what would have been able to be achieved with older powders. At the same operating pressures as the older powders. Correct. So, yeah. one more note on bonded core bullets. What a bonded core, his explanation is adequate, but I do want to add. I'm, a, only, I'm a, only adding. <laughs> a bonded core projectile has a mechanical bond of the lead core to the jacket. So that is achieved not particularly by usually by some form of a shelf or a press fit that allows that core to physically bond itself to the jacket by by way of a mechanical bond. If the jacket kind of comes down and forms a cup and that core is squeezed into that cup, That's there's more. no way that that that, that 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 jacket become, can become separated from what from I the understand, projectile. I'm gonna have to disagree because from what I understand, like the bonded core is basically almost like the Federal Fusion. It's literally a like molecular bonding. It's like almost like a molecular gluing of the jacket to the core. Now a mechanical bond, like you see, like the nozzle partitions and things like that, and even like some of these Hornady rounds that we'll discuss yeah. later. Some of the like FTX line and the rifle bullets, they actually do have a shelf, and they don't consider that to be a particularly like a bonded, like a, a, a fusion or like a molecularly bonded projectile. It's a mechanically bonded where the jacket won't really separate as much. All but right, I'll tell you what, then we'll go on to our next thing. Spear Gold Dot, excellent round, okay? So first one in the lineup, Spear Gold Dot is an excellent choice. They've been around, they're proven. Mm -hmm. Law enforcement chooses Gold Dot on a regular basis. Spear makes excellent, excellent projectiles. Now let's go along a different part of the rabbit hole. We're gonna jump out of line a little bit. No! Now we've done some penetration testing 
with barrier blindness with various projectiles. We did this video uh, with a bunch of Lehigh projectiles, and we also tested <laughs> a lot of other projectiles that are on the market as well. And one thing we found is that, you know, uh, the Lehigh Extreme Penetrator fared extraordinarily well in those tests. And the, the Federal maybe didn't hold up quite as good in the barrier penetration mm. testing, but one thing, the star of the show, guys, was the Hornady Critical Defense. Mm. Now, the way that that jacket is attached to the core of that bullet is something special because mm. it's to say something that the way that, 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 the, that this bullet design, whether it's the ogive of the bullet, which allows for smoother feeding, it, it's also got you know the flex polymer tip. flex mm -hmm. tip in it, which allows it to not get uh, caught up with a whole bunch of crap yeah. and allow it to not expand. So that is one issue that we ran into with with bullets like the HST, the Hornady H. Or listen to me, Federal HST <laughs> is an excellent round, <laughs> but it right. also has a very large and generous cavity, mm -hmm. which can fill up with gene material, mm -hmm. particulates, glass concrete, drywall, drywall, and all of those particulates filling up the nose of that cavity of that bullet could cause the bullet to not expand. Mm -hmm. So in a barrier blindness test, which we have scientifically and pretty pretty well tested, okay, the Hornady Critical Defense, in my opinion, is one of the top performers if you're looking for a barrier blind projectile. Mm -hmm. And man, the weight retention was good, mm -hmm. the, the penetration was good, and even after going through the barrier, the bullet still penetrated mm -hmm. in the ballistic shelter. You know, a lot of people would think, okay, well, even if the hollow tip, you know, fills up with some particular or whatever, why won't it just push it out and expand the projectile? Well, because it's not flexible. I mean, glass isn't really flexible. Drywall, plywood, that's not flexible. It fills up and it prevents the projectile from doing its job. The flex tip is a flexible material, so it can't get gummed up. If it just starts getting, you know, some materials try to push in there, it's just going to go... And it's just going to do its job. And it's fluid dynamics. It was awesome. That round was very, very impressive. It, it's essentially fluid dynamics by a, a soft and mount, very soft flesh-like or let's just say liquid-like consistency yeah. filling up that nose. It forces it to open and expand. And that's how hollow point works is mm -hmm. that void is filled by your target that you're shooting. And as long as the material doesn't clog the projectile and allow those, those fluid dynamics to occur, it's, it's a very scientific thing the way all of that stuff and works. We ain't smart enough to really well, understand nor explain <laughs> it because you know we're just unsophisticated rednecks but but the thing is is there there is literally the way that that temporary cavity forms mm -hmm. it has a lot to do with how that bullet expands and it's so crazy the way it works so the critical defense worked really well in the barrier penetration testing mm -hmm. the gold dot you know fared quite well now underwood now not only underwood but mm -hmm. lehigh also loads ammo but primarily these underwoods here now they load a lot of uh, Lehigh's offerings, and we've tested a lot of the Lehigh projectiles. Now, the old Extreme Penetrator is what it was known as. You know, was a really good bullet, and it will literally get <laughs> right through anything you want it to. It'll go through everything. But I think what they found was that that was one complaint they got is that maybe it penetrates a little too good. It's not exactly a good carry around when you're when you're wanting to minimize collateral damage. That's a big thing with with yeah. carry ammunition is minimizing collateral damage. And, you know, not having a bullet go, like if you do have to, to use a firearm in a self-defense scenario and you're, you're shooting someone, you know, that bullet, once it leaves, it doesn't need to go through, you know, the, the tree and the school outside and all this kind of stuff. Right, like, Johnny I mean, Dangerous. Oh, yeah. Goes through the victim, <laughs> through the wall, through the tree outside. Yeah, you know. I mean, but that round was impressive. And it just, it, it's, it's very similar to this extreme defense, you know, projectile, but... They went and they made some modifications to the original, you know, screwdriver bullet. That's what a lot of people call it because it literally just has a cross on the top of it. It's a good bullet. And these channels that just hydraulically disrupt everything in its path, and it's just insane. I would say that the the hydraulic disruption is a more accurate way mm -hmm. to describe it because that's exactly what's happening now. The flutes on the front of this bullet, compared to the original XP, are cut in a way that mm -hmm. allow maximum amount of fluid displacement, hydraulic displacement mm -hmm. of tissue. Ideally, bone, uh, you know, obviously, sinew, whatever. Uh, but those flutes, basically, what they do, there's no expansion that occurs mm -hmm. in this bullet. It keeps its form and its shape. The the actual disruption and and temporary and permanent cavitation that occurs when this bullet enters an animal or whatever or or gelatin mm -hmm. is by way of the way that that those fluids are forced around the shape, the ogive of this bullet, the shape of it. And of, of these flutes and the shape of these flutes. And we found that 
whereby this bullet doesn't have quite the penetration of the original XP. It really does have some nasty wound cavities. It does, and what's impressive is this bullet performs just as well as any of the other offerings on this table that we've tested in ballistics gel with the slow-mo camera and everything. And it, even though this bullet doesn't expand, you know, past its nominal dynamic or diameter, it does perform equally well compared to a hollow point that actually opens up. Well, it's we found really that, that, the, that the permanent cavity on this bullet compared to other expanding bullets was almost identical. It was. Now, the temporary cavity that we saw in a lot of this gelatin shots might be a little bit more extreme with, mm. with some of these other carry rounds just because, you know, you are physically increasing the diameter of the projectile when it expands. However, the, the one thing that's nice about this particular loading, and we'll move on after this, mm. but the nice thing about this loading is that it is a very barrier blind load mm. because it doesn't have to expand. Its mm. ability to cause damage in tissue is done by the, the way it is shaped. Mm. It is a copper solid, so it is just a solid, homogenous piece mm. of copper. No lead, no expansion, no cavities, no jokes. It's just what you see. That projectile so, is a, literally it's a good bullet. That projectile is literally the epitome of fluid dynamics. It's insane. It is. I love it so much. It is. All, All right, right, so next. we're gonna move to the next one on the line now. This is one of, like this is one of my favorite loads. Mm -hmm. Despite some of the things we've talked about with, with all of these, I do like the Federal HST, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, Chad, why don't you explain one of the reasons why? I, I'll, I'll give my reason, but so I, wanna, I know the, you. The big thing reasons. with HST <laughs> with me is that, like, locally, in, in Georgia, a lot of law enforcement's been switching over to, like, 9 millimeters, like Glock 17s and stuff, and they've been switching to HST in a lot of cases. And Federal has made some really vast improvements on this particular... Um, bullet design over the past several years. They have. And really, like Eric mentioned earlier, you know, with the new propellants and, and all the other uh, aspects to ammunition development and manufacture, nine millimeter has really kind of become more mainstream. Everybody used to think, okay, I need a 40 or I need a 45, a bigger hole, blah, blah, blah. But nine millimeter performance wise is right up there with the big dogs. And it's never been better, really. And if you think about the increases in technology for bullet designs that we've seen, the increased technology put into propellants, not only flash retarders, but also just the power level we're mm -hmm. getting. And you know, you notice every single one of these rounds also uses nickel-plated mm -hmm. brass that makes low light chamber checks easy. You can mm -hmm. do a press check and you can see it a lot easier under low light. Corrosion resistance Corrosion as well. resistance, the whole gambit, you guys know that. But man, pound for pound and dollar for dollar, the Federal HST is a great round. And the fact that you can buy these 50 round boxes for mm -hmm. usually south of 20 bucks, I mean, that's usually 50 cents or less a shot, Most depending of the, on how cheap you get it. If you, if you check online, like I use Ammo Seek all the time and all, but there, there's the federal law enforcement line, the tactical you know, line, and then there's the federal premium, just standard personal defense line. These boxes are usually 20 rounds, and they're upwards of normally a dollar a shot or better, but you can buy literally the same ammunition in a 50 round box for 20 to 25 bucks, depending on the caliber. Even like 45 uh, ACP in an HST, I've gotten for like 26 bucks a box of 50, That's which very is reasonable. incredibly inexpensive and it just represents a huge value over everything else on the table. I mean, this is like the best bang for the buck in carry ammo out there. Yep. I mean, it really is. I mean, I have to say, like, out of the, all the ones that we've showed off so far, like, what I carry in my, I carry a shield, and in my shield, I run 147 grain mm -hmm. HST. I like a big, heavy bullet. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to fit the heaviest bullet for caliber that I can get in the gun that will run reliably, accurately, and do the job. Same and here. I like 147 grain ammo in a 9 millimeter. You know, in 45 ACP, if I'm going to run a 45, guess what? I'm running 230 grain spear gold dot, or I'm mm -hmm. running, I'm running 180 grain XP. What is this stuff? 165 or 180? I think it's lighter than that. I think it's like a 120. It's 120. Okay, yeah. The, X, the, the XDs are a little bit on the lighter side. So, I, you know, we'll, we'll do a synopsis well, when we get to the end. That is a solid but. copper projectile as well. I don't know if we mentioned that, but yeah. everything else on the table is a lead core with a copper jacket. Right. This is a solid machined projectile out of solid copper. So. All right, so the last one on the list here, and last but not least, we've mm -hmm. got some Winchester Defender. Uh, this is a 124 grain plus P. It is a bonded core projectile, and this stuff is excellent too. Um, we've blown up a lot of sodas with these, and uh, and done a lot of shooting. And it's just so neat to see the way that these hollow points will impact. You know, even something simple like a soda bottle, a watermelon. compared to mm. or a watermelon, compared to like let's just say a ball round. The hollow points really do deliver a lot of lethality, and the Winchester. 
I, I would say it's definitely not the least expensive option on the table. It, it is a little bit pricey, but it does hold up quite well. And Winchester is putting out some really good carry mm -hmm. ammo as well. Um, you know, and, and then Plus P offering is really nice. So I would say out of all of these, it, the way that I would break it down, and we do have a wild card we're going to mention in a minute. I don't have the box, but we do have the ammo. I've got pictures of the box. One thing that we're going to mention here is that I think barrier blindness mm -hmm. and penetration, with barrier blindness being emphasis, critical defense. Mm -hmm. Value-minded, like you want to buy a lot of carry ammo and you want to practice with carry mm -hmm. ammo, Federal HST. Mm -hmm. And Federal HST has also been accepted and used by quite a few law enforcement agencies, as has Gold Dot. Mm -hmm. So if you want, some, you want the same thing the police carry, HST, Gold Dot, you're right in there. You want a one-trick pony that you don't have to worry about barrier blindness, you don't have to worry about over-penetration, you don't have to worry about a myriad of different issues, you just need to put it in the gun and shoot it. Mm -hmm. The Underwoods, although a little bit on the expensive side, are a great option for some of you. And well, one thing I like about the 120 grain on the XD is the recoil is very light too. It it's not a heavy recoil and round at all. One thing too is environmental concerns. I mean, depending on where you live, there might be environmental concerns with lead core projectiles. I mean, you know, I don't know, California maybe. I mean, you know. Maybe. So I would say where the Winchester sits in the mix is it is it is a medium price carry round, and I would say that it would be equally as capable as HST or the Gold Dot, or really any any of the rounds that are on this table. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of sits in the mix there. All right, so what's the wild card? We have to mention this because we've tested a lot of it. We have. We've done some videos with the G2 rip ammo, and this stuff, <laughs> this stuff has been like talked about online for years and years and years. I mean, just people were going apy when this stuff started coming out. But this is some pretty interesting ammunition. It's a solid copper projectile, and it has these pedals that basically, you know, expand and then break off and create their own little wound tracks in gel and. I, I like the idea of this projectile. It's cool. I mean, it's it looks great in ballistic shell, but it's me personally, practical wise, as far as carrying it, I can't get around like losing losing weight off of the projectile. You know, I think I would it, always prefer more penetration. That's I mean, like like I said, my idea, like Eric said, was you know running the heaviest pill you could in the caliber of your choice. That's my idea when it comes to a carry gun. Yeah. As long as you can handle the recoil and everything, and you practice with it, shoots well, and works properly, carry the heaviest thing you can because I want that weight retention, I want that energy on target. And with the rip, it's awesome, but I don't know. I'm, I've kind of still got mixed feelings now, about it. Now, where this round would excel, okay, let's say you're an air marshal and you're in, you, your job is to be up in a plane with a gun protecting the passengers, you know, you're an air marshal. This would be a good air marshal round because you do not have to worry about overpenetration mm -hmm. with this round. If you're carrying in a crowded place where you're worried that if you have to defend yourself, you might hit an innocent bystander, mm -hmm. let's hope, gosh, hope that nobody ever has to be in that situation. But let, we're just talking theoretically mm -hmm. here. I mean, I'm trying to, to play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. If you were in a crowded place and you're worried about overpenetration, this is a good round for that because it's not going to overpenetrate the target. Mm -hmm. But you do lose some points here in that you may lack penetration that you need to cause a potentially lethal wound to an assailant who might be a little bit girthier of a man. You know, you get a, a 300 pound dude trying to kill you and all of a sudden, you know, the G2 might, I might feel a little undergunned, okay? Now, that's just my I'd, opinion. I'd be worried about getting through like heavy clothing and stuff like that with that particular projectile just because the pedals will break off and then you'd lose a lot of energy just trying to get through, you know? I think the rip does have its use, but I think that the uses are a little bit more, I will say, limited than the, uh, some of the other things mm -hmm. we have on the table. You should always exercise judicious uh, <laughs> application of marksmanship in any situation, okay? Mm -hmm. So don't, don't assume that a round is gonna save you because of its attributes uh, making up for some lack of preparation you made on your part. Mm -hmm. You should always treat any projectile that leaves a barrel, ball round, hollow point, anything, that it could be the deadliest thing ever. You have to act like it's going to go a million miles and hurt everybody in its path. Mm -hmm. You have to know what's beyond your target. You have to know what's behind your target. I mean, mm -hmm. all of these things come into play, and you have to make that split-second decision immediately. Well, the thing is, like <laughs> we've, always, hard. we've always said it, but you, know, you own every single round you fire downrange. Correct. You own it. That's right. And you, you own it until it comes to a stop. Yep. And you better hope it comes to a stop somewhere that's safe. 
but anyway, we hope that you enjoyed today's uh, five guns video. This has kind of been a top uh, five rounds video, but we thought that we'd make this video. Uh, lots of folks been asking us about our favorite carry rounds. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are good carry rounds? Why are they good? So hopefully you've seen a pretty solid representation of what's out there. This is not all of the rounds that are out there. We've shot some other cool stuff. Another honorable mention would be like the uh, Glacier uh, safety slugs. Those are kind of a lightweight devil and they, they kind of get into the same territory as the G2 mm -hmm. where it's this rapid, vicious release of energy, but very little not a lot of penetration. So mm -hmm. that is, I think that what the big Achilles heel and what a lot of people are going to on these rounds is respectable penetration. Mm -hmm. And heavy weight for caliber, I think, is really where people's focus is. Yeah, seems to be the thing nowadays for sure. It does, it does. Uh, thank you guys for watching today's video. We appreciate every single one of you. Uh, you know, make sure, it, look, if you love this content and you love what we're putting out and you'd love to help support the channel, Consider donating a few bucks on Patreon to help us out and keep us going. Maybe purchase a man can if you like the channel. Consider doing so because we need your support more so than ever. All the funds that we make off any merch that we sell goes right back into funding the channel. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thanks for watching today's video. Many more on the way. And no, Chad's not dead. He's right here. <laughs> And he's going to be in more videos. He spends a lot of time behind the camera these days. Well, I've been working, too. Like all the guitar solo content, I mean, you know, editing and putting up five videos a week is a little bit of a tick. It is, yeah. Shameless plug. So. We also have a music channel called Guitar Solo. Shameless Solos. plug. Shameless plug. And we do, we do all sorts of stuff with guitars, amps, uh, effects, and we have a series called Tone Talk. Mm -hmm. So if you're a music guy and you want to check out some of our music stuff, we love demoing gear, go check out Guitar Signal mm -hmm. as well. Uh, there'll be a link in the description box below if you want to go check that channel out. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd love to have you over there. Subscribe. Check us out. Uh, we've always got our hands in something going on. We've been very busy putting out content. Thank you so much for the support, so much for watching today. We'll see you next time. Many more on the way. See you guys.